copyright disclaimer. There is a comparatively minor scene in Goodfellas that exposes two major symbolic motifs that recur throughout the film. The minor scene takes place when Karen visits Henry in prison with daughters Judy and Ruth. The two major symbolic motifs involve money and murder. In the following presentation, we'll look briefly at the prison visiting room scene where the symbolism is exposed. From there, we will survey symbolic representations of money and murder throughout the film. During the prison visiting room scene, there occurs seven conspicuous lapses in continuity. These discontinuities are not errors. Instead, they reflect a cinematic technique used to mimic the psychological states of Henry and Karen, respectively. There are other examples in the film where the internal state of a character influences the depiction of external events. There are 13 freeze frames, each depicting the formation of a milestone memory in Henry's mind. There is the fluid, continuous camera shot of Henry and Karen at the Copacabana depicting a kind of romantic dream. Finally, there are double takes, jump cuts, and a motor mouth voiceover depicting Henry strung out on cocaine. The same basic strategy is used in the prison visiting room scene. Instead of freeze frames, a continuous camera shot, or frenetic edits, we have a series of discontinuities. These distortions reflect the psychological and emotional distress that a long prison sentence has had on Henry and Karen. Let's go through them in order from start to finish. The first discontinuity occurs when Karen hands out the baby blocks to her children. As she places orange and blue blocks in front of Judy, Ruth is already holding a green block, even though there would not have been time enough for Karen to hand it to her. The green block simply appears in Ruth's hand. The second instance occurs when we see a magenta block spontaneously appear on the table alongside the two blocks Karen originally handed to Judy. The third instance occurs when we see the three colored blocks previously scattered in front of Judy now appear stacked vertically. The fourth instance occurs when we see a change to the stack of blocks. While the top block on the stack had been blue, we can see that the top block is now magenta. The fifth instance occurs when we see that all of the blocks in front of Judy have disappeared. Likewise, Ruth now holds her single green block below the tabletop. The sixth instance occurs when Judy holds only the orange and blue blocks her mother originally handed to her. There is no magenta block. The seventh and final discontinuity occurs when we see all three blocks lying flat on the table in front of Judy. The magenta block returns. Likewise, Ruth now holds up the green block she previously held below the tabletop. In addition to reflecting the toll prison has taken on the couple, the discontinuities draw our attention to the colored baby blocks. What we come to find is that these blocks expose a symbolic system at work in the film. The green block that Ruth holds represents money. The symbolism refers not only to the color of money, but, more importantly, to the shape of money. As we will see, the block shape plays a prominent role in the presentation of money throughout the film. The orange and blue blocks that Judy holds symbolize murder. It is important to note that the symbolism entails both colors appearing together. Finally, the magenta block represents Karen. However, given the scope and complexity of her character, we will need to cover the symbolism involved her in a separate presentation. In this presentation, we will stick to money and murder. In this section, we will look at symbolic representations of money modeled on the green block Ruth holds during the prison visiting room scene. The symbolism takes two forms. In some cases, cash is presented as a green block. In other cases, a green block symbolizes cash. Regardless of which formulation appears on screen, the message remains the same. Organized money is a metaphor for organized crime. There are multiple instances when Jimmy slips cash to people as a tip or a payoff. In each case, the money appears neatly folded and forms a square as he passes it off. Jimmy slips a $20 bill into young Henry's shirt pocket on casino night. He slides folded $100 bills into a stolen carton of cigarettes to pay off police. He slips a 50 into the wallet of a truck driver stopped by his gang. Finally, he puts reward money into Henry's pocket following his first arrest. 
When Polly holds court outside, he sits in front of a chain-link fence that separates him from the overgrown vacant lot behind him. The combined visual effect of the chain-link pattern and high grass positions Polly in front of a sprawling wall of small green blocks. The image reflects the voiceover narration that speaks to the fact that, quote, hundreds of guys depended on Polly and he got a piece of everything they made. It was tribute, just like in the old country, except they were doing it here in America, end quote. The wall of small green blocks symbolizes the tribute paid to Polly by the hundreds of guys who depend on him. While Polly listens to Sonny pitch him on a partnership in the Bamboo Lounge, there is a large open window in the background behind him. Here again, Polly is paired with a block shape fleshed out with green foliage. In this instance, the symbolism portends the profits Polly expects to extract from the restaurant and bar. Henry pulls $60,000 out of the suitcase stolen from Air France to pay tribute to Polly. The stack of cash forms a large green block on the wooden desk. There are several other green blocks available in the mise-en-scene. The olive green suitcase used in the robbery constitutes a block shape. There is a maze-like block pattern visible in green on the inside of the lamp hanging over the desk. Finally, notice the block pattern on the faint green ceiling tiles above and behind Jimmy, Henry, and Polly when all three men are standing. Polly takes Henry into his backyard and orders him to stop selling drugs. The yard is carpeted with green grass and draped in green foliage. Notice the umbrella over the patio table in the center of the frame. The composition is similar to the green lamp hanging over the wooden desk in Polly's social club when the Air France tribute was paid. The overall imagery plays with our perception of scale. The two men appear dwarfed, standing inside a symbolic green block that overtakes the entire frame. The green block inside which the two men stand represents Polly's tremendous wealth and power. The white latticework fence supplies a green block pattern backdrop. The drug racket that Henry operates becomes so successful that he recruits Jimmy and Tommy to assist him. To demonstrate the success of his operation, Henry invites the two men to peer into his paper shopping bag containing shoeboxes filled with money. Here again, we have cash stacked in block form. Henry Hill stands in his shower surrounded by green tiles when news of the multi-million dollar Lufthansa caper is announced over the radio. The tiles constitute a wall of green blocks symbolizing the massive amount of cash successfully stolen from the airline. There are multiple instances when one character hands a wad of cash to another. Henry hands cash to Karen for Hanukkah as she cackles with delight. Jimmy hands Karen 2000 in cash after Henry is arrested on drug charges. Polly hands Henry a little over 3000 in cash before turning his back at their last meeting. Each folded bundle recalls the green cube Ruth holds in the prison visiting room. In this section, we will look at every murder in chronological order. In each case, we will identify how and when the orange and blue color combination appears on screen. The first murder in the film features Billy Bats. Here, the fatal color combination is concealed among the balloons and streamers decorating the walls and ceiling of the bar where Billy celebrates his homecoming from prison. Orange and blue balloons appear behind his gathering entourage near an illuminated payphone. Another pair of orange and blue balloons are positioned in front of Billy to his right behind the bar. Incidentally, we also have another symbol for money here. Notice the blocky green light shade illuminated over the cash register. When Tommy arrives with his date, Billy calls him over and the pair share a clumsy embrace. Tommy becomes annoyed with the way Billy manhandles him. As Tommy pushes Billy off to return to his date, the camera moves with Tommy in such a way that we see yet another pair of orange and blue balloons appear behind him. After enduring the shine box insult, Tommy leaves to take his date home and returns to murder Billy. As Jimmy and Tommy stomp and pistol whip Billy, the camera cuts to a low angle shot of Henry looking on in horror beneath yet another pair of orange and blue balloons hung from the ceiling above him. Six months after the Billy Bats murder, Jimmy learns that the gravesite is at risk of exposure. As a result, Jimmy, Henry, and Tommy must move the body. The morning after completing their grisly task, Henry hoses out the trunk of his car and sprays cologne to cover the stench. He wears a royal blue tank top and is surrounded by three orange rags.
In the first of two back-to-back episodes, Tommy shoots Spider in the foot during a card game in the back of Henry's bar. When we return for a second night of cards, Tommy murders Spider. In both scenes, the jukebox in the background furnishes the orange and blue color scheme. Notice that small blue lights adorn the front speaker panel on the jukebox, while alphanumeric song selection keys and illuminated user instructions comprise a row of orange lights. In the first of the Lufthansa murders, Tommy shoots Stax in his apartment. The orange and blue color scheme takes the form of clothing worn by victim and killer. Stax is dressed in a light orange tank top and underpants with orange trim around the waist and legs. Tommy wears a blue trench coat and follows Stax into his bedroom. As Stax gets dressed, Tommy slips behind him, aims his gun and silencer at the back of Stax's head, and pulls the trigger. Morris is executed with an ice pick to the back of the neck. The orange and blue color scheme takes the form of two automobiles in the parking lot at the scene of the crime. As Jimmy, Tommy, Frankie, and Morris exit Robert's lounge, they walk past the rear of an orange Austin Healey Mark I Sprite before loading into an ice blue Cadillac. Morris sits in the front passenger seat and Tommy kills him with the ice pick from the back seat. Notice that the driver's side of the Austin Healey remains illuminated in the frame even after Morris is murdered. Murdered. Murder victims Johnny Roast Beef and his bride are discovered entombed in their newly purchased pink Cadillac. We see the car parked next to a cement trestle supporting Long Island Railroad tracks overhead. Graffiti is scrawled on the trestle archway. A blue tag appears on the left side of the arch and an orange tag appears on the right side. Notice another instance of the same colors presented on a grand scale. The blue steel girders supporting the overhead railroad tracks above the Cadillac paired with the massive orange brick wall behind the Cadillac. Sanitation workers discover murder victims Robert Frenchy McMahon and Joe Buddha Manri when the pair land face up in the hopper of a garbage truck. The quilted orange lining of McMahon's jacket flanks either side of his blood-splattered death mask. The camera then performs a slow counterclockwise corkscrew zoom deep into his nickname. The word Frenchy is embroidered in orange thread on his navy blue work shirt. Frankie Carbone is discovered frozen in the back of a refrigerated panel truck in Manhattan's meatpacking district. As a looming boom shot moves toward the rear doors of the truck, a local worker walks into view on the left side of the frame. Dressed like other workers milling around, he wears a white hard hat, smock, and overcoat. Beneath his smock, we see an orange t-shirt paired with a blue jacket slung over his shoulder. Tommy is the last character murdered in the film. He is lured to his death under the guise of membership in the Mafia. When he is picked up to attend his induction ceremony, the orange and blue color scheme portending his death takes the form of two cars on the street in front of his mother's home. As Tommy steps out the front door and heads down to the sidewalk, we first see a blue two-door sedan parked across the street. Soon after, we see an orange Volkswagen Bug drive through the scene. In this section, we will look at three scenes that involve unrealized threats to murder Henry and Karen, respectively. The scenes occur after Henry and his associates are arrested for cocaine distribution. In each case, the orange and blue color scheme emerges to confirm that the characters are right to suspect their immortal danger. Karen visits Henry in jail where he pleads with her to get him released on bail. Henry explains to Karen that he will be killed unless he can straighten things out with Polly. Henry wears a bright orange jumpsuit while Karen wears a royal blue top. The colors confirm what Henry already knows and what Karen will soon find out. They're both slated to be killed. Jimmy attempts to lure Karen to her death with stolen Dior dresses. He directs her out the back of his Brooklyn warehouse and down the block to a storefront on the corner. There he claims to keep the stolen goods. While the majority of the frame is pitch black, we can see a two-tone orange jukebox with a blue speaker panel in the passageway behind Jimmy. After Jimmy escorts Karen onto the sidewalk outside, we see two dormant pinball machines back to back beside the warehouse. Both feature orange and blue design elements on the back glass. Interestingly, each back glass design depicts the scene playing out on the sidewalk. The 1971 Astro pinball machine faces Jimmy as he watches Karen walk down the street. The design features a frightened woman alone in space looking back at a menacing figure. The 1980 Ground Shaker pinball machine faces Karen 
Karen as she looks back at Jimmy. The design features a woman looking on in horror at a chaotic scene featuring a blue funny car with the words search and destroy emblazoned in orange letters on its side. When Karen arrives at the storefront, she instinctively realizes it's a trap and flees the scene. As she does so, a crane shot travels vertically along the signpost on the street corner. First, we see an orange don't walk sign. Next, we see two street signs in blue lettering on a white background marking the corner of 9th and Smith Streets. At their last meeting, Henry confirms that Jimmy plans to have him killed. Both men are dressed in blue and embrace under orange overhead lights. After the two settle into the booth, notice that there is a single small glass of orange juice situated between them. During their conversation, Jimmy attempts to set Henry up to be killed. In two back-to-back -back freeze frames, Henry realizes that his friend and mentor has betrayed him and that life as he knows it is now over. There are two additional instances of the murderous orange and blue color scheme that fall outside the categories we've discussed up to this point. Here, the colors do not accompany a murder or confirm an active murder plot. Instead, the colors indicate that death is part of the atmosphere of the scene. The first instance involves Jimmy being arrested after Henry and Karen go into witness protection. Jimmy wears an orange shirt and blue pants as he is escorted to a police car in handcuffs. Notice that he passes another orange and blue jukebox as he exits the same storefront where he previously sent Karen to be killed. Based on both clothing and context, we may conclude that Jimmy has murder on his mind. The second instance involves the jury in the final courtroom scene when Henry testifies against Polly and Jimmy. Notice that the first juror in the top row wears blue and the first juror in the bottom row wears orange. This suggests that efforts may have been going on behind the scenes during the course of the trial to have Henry murdered. Given the raft of examples we've reviewed during this presentation, there should be no question that the film supports a symbolic system to represent both money and murder. There are some additional questions to answer, however. For example, why do the symbols for money and murder appear to be presented without context during the prison visitation scene? There is no money and no murder while the couple meets with their children, for example. Next, how is it that murder in particular is represented by the colors blue and orange? Finally, if murder is symbolized by the colors blue and orange, then why are the two scenes at the Bat's gravesite suffused with the color red? These are all questions we look forward to resolving in a forthcoming video presentation.